Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques. Learn everything about Excel. Okay, today we're going to revisit a recent Friday challenge where uh, we were challenged to create a chart for a music festival uh, where you have different stages for that music festival and different times so that uh, the person who was doing this could do this more easily in an Excel chart. So put the challenge out there and Peter came up with a great chart. Uh, it's a Gantt chart type of chart uh, using bar, a stacked bar chart. Uh, and he's got the bottom section here labeled in kind of gray uh, wherever these are gonna be blank so that these look like they're just floating. So you can kind of see where those uh, slices are of the stacked bar chart. Uh, and he's set it up in a really great way. I had overly complicated formulas. He's used some tables to really make it shine and do it uh, so that it's more expandable as well. Uh, you'll notice over here on the right, we've got uh, several bands. We've got band one, band two, band three. So uh, you could continue this out and make band four, band five. Uh, you can uh, continue to do that. So that's what's great about this one. Uh, whereas mine was going to just overly complicate the formulas even more. But let's go ahead and take a look at how Pete made this. So first, we have our data over here. So band A is going to be on stage four, starting at 105 and ending at uh, 140. What he did is he created another table here. And here's the genius part of it. He is combining. Uh, so he's just got a couple of things that are looking right over it. Uh, let's take a look at what the band is and what the stage is. But right here is the beauty of it. Uh, Pete has created a combination of um, the stage number, which is right here in column H, um, and a counter saying, go ahead and count in column H all the values of stage four, locking in the first row, and then continuing to have a relative range for the second row uh, for that value. So you'll notice if I go ahead and I hit F2 in here, you'll see it's looking at that one row next to it. If I hit F2 one column below, it's now counting between both of those. If I hit F2 again, see since we locked, what it's doing is locking H3 and H5 continues to move as you copy the formula down. Um, so that is saying that uh, band four has one occurrence and then band four has, or I'm sorry, stage four has one occurrence and then stage four has a second occurrence a little farther along. So this is really what's gonna set us up for victory here. Uh, next, we just have the start time, end times, and then we really need to calculate the duration. That is the end time minus the start time, so that's 35 minutes. And the duration is what's going to give us this blue part of the Gantt chart right here, um, all throughout there. So that's important. So uh, when we create our chart, ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to chart um, our start time. We're going to tack on to that the duration. Um, and so that you can see, um, we don't need to know the end time in the chart at all. We're going to chart the start time, which is the gray part here. And we're going to tack on the blue chart for the duration. All right, now let's get down to the rest of it. Uh, so once we have our data set up, as Pete's done, um, we've got another separate table over here by stage. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create um, uh, labels for our columns, or, or for our vertical axis here with a simple formula that says just take the word stage and add what is over in column N. Uh, now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to say what is band 1? And uh, what we're doing is he's using an index and a match function. And uh, I'll put a link to this in the show notes so that you can go find out more about index and match. But essentially, uh, it is saying return the band name whenever you are matching the stage and P1. Well, let's take a look. What's in P1? P1 has a dash 1 in it. So that's where it's saying grab stage um, 1 right here do a space dash one. And so it's looking for any occurrence that matches. And here it is, one dash one, and that's band D. If I hit escape up here, notice you see band D. So um, he is matching stage with the current number that we have over in column N with what value we have up in uh, row P1. Um, and then match that um, over here in the tables and uh, make sure it is an exact match. Once we have that, we now know that what band is appearing as our first band on stage one through five. Now, using that same index and match, we can go ahead and find uh, 
to find 1425 instead of doing um, instead of returning the band name like we have in column P column Q look we're gonna return the start time so you can see it's a different column but it's still saying let me find 1-1 there it is 1425 and that's what's returned over here we do the same thing for duration and uh, finally um, then we change our values up in this column up here uh, to the value of dash two because now we want our second band occurrence time you can see later we have dash three and that's how we're gonna go ahead and now find find our band two well most of them do not have a band two only stage four right stage four has band A and band C so what we have here is uh, we should have lots of not applicables if it doesn't equal anything and if it does find something it's going to put that value here and like we had before with the index and match it's going to return the values for band C um, now we do have one new column in here that you're going to see and this is adjusted start time so just like let's go ahead and take a look in our, in our chart down here so in stage uh, one we have a start time that doesn't start until out here and then we have a duration well when you have two bands you're going to have a clear fill area here you're going to have the first band's duration right there you're going to have to have another clear fill area until that second band starts so that's what this adjusted start time is here and what he is doing is he is subtracting start time two for band two um, from start time one of band one and then subtracting the duration so uh, once again the beauty of this is that you can now expand as many bands as you want and let's go ahead and change the chart data over here so let's go over and say you know band C we are gonna move band C to stage three I can type in three and you'll notice that my chart changes and C is now down in band uh, or in the stage three anytime you change start times you can change these durations we can say 1700 here and uh, that band is going to be a lot longer on that stage so really ingenious the way he set up the formulas to do that now let's take a look at how you build the chart if you click in here in the chart um, we've got several different chart ranges first once again our um, no fill area here although we have it in the light gray so that you can see it is going to be our start time this R here, uh, column R is going to be our duration for the first band. And uh, if I change band C back to stage four, if I click on it, you'll see our duration out here now is what we're using um, for our next interval. But it's not applicable if it's not there, so that's why I had to put it back in. So there's our adjusted start time. And then we have our duration for the second band is going to show up there. Now, let's also take a look at a few things that we've done. Um, so what you can do is uh, Pete's just gone ahead and created a stacked bar chart and then added in the different series that he wanted, knowing what specific data he had. Um, and then uh, if we double click on the format of the vertical axis, you will see um, that categories are in reverse order. If I had just plotted this straight out, stage five would be on top, stage one on the bottom. So we reverse those orders. Um, and then that also allows us to find our times up here in the very top as well. Now, if we look at our horizontal axis of time here, you will see that we have some different values um, in our axis options. You'll see that we have a set value of 0.45167 of minimum and a maximum so that we're starting at 1300 um, and we're ending at uh, 530 uh, is our upper and outer bounds. Um, and then our units, this right here is how we're getting the different five minute intervals, increments is what the uh, client wanted. And so you, I know if I hit reset here on all of these, um, it's not set to auto. We're forcing it into this so that it's not a 24 hour time range. And we're also telling it, show us your major grid lines every five minutes. Um, and then uh, uh, finally, what he's also done is you can see that we have vertical and horizontal grid lines. And you can do that up in your chart elements, grid lines, and you can add your primary major and primary uh, major vertical and major horizontal uh, grid lines there. So hopefully uh, you can uh, download the sample file out on the blog um, so that you can take a look at how this, uh, uh, these formulas work and that you can build your own Gantt chart for your music festival or any uh, time you're trying to schedule something uh, within Excel so that you can easily just go in and change the numbers
and change the stages. Let's change this to stage three. Um, and so uh, that you can get those scheduled out how you like. Once again, this is Steve Equals True. Please head on over to Excel Dashboard Templates.com and download this sample file. Also, consider subscribing to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox.